Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Cricut Cheer. In this video, we are going to be doing one of my favorite crafts. We're using infusible ink to create the little ceramic coasters. So I have the little four pack of Cricut ceramic circular coasters. They're really beautiful. They always turn out so pretty and polished and I'm really excited to see how these turn out for Christmas. So for my infusible ink, I have this pack of infusible ink and it is called the Cabbage Rose Pack. And it comes with a rose um, pattern here, but why I bought it was because I really liked this burgundy color. So I can't wait to see how that turns out. I'm not really fond of the floral pattern, but I really liked the burgundy, so I thought it would be really festive for Christmas. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. And then I have a measuring tape to get a quick measurement. We have a three and a half inch uh, coaster to work with and then I have my easy press mat I have some cardstock and then I have a lint-free cloth just to wipe off my coasters We're also going to be using the easy press 2. I have the 9 by 9 out to work with and then for our machine We're going to be using the Cricut Explore Air 2. You can use any cutting machine for this project though Okay, if I sneak anything else into this video, which I'm bound to for sure, please be sure to just check out the description box below the video to make sure you get an entire list of materials that are used. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and hop into Cricut Design Space and we are going to get our little coasters designed. Super cute, super easy, and they're gonna be a really fun little addition to the Christmas decor. Okay, so in Design Space, I went ahead and found four images for the four coasters that I'm going to use. So the four images I found are right here. I went and found them in the image section of Cricut Design Space, but I'll go through and name them for you in case you want to refine them. So this ornament is called Ornament with Snowflakes. The second one is Christmas Snow Globe. This wreath is called Christmas Wreath, and then we have Merry and Bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the shape box. I'm going to select a circle, and I am going to size it at three and a half inches. That's the size of my coaster. And then I am going to make this a deep red because that's the color of our coasters. I'm gonna size this up so that we can really see what we're working with. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and select my circle and I'm going to duplicate it three times to get a total of four and that will be the four coasters that I'm going to create. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and say send to front and I'm just going to bring my little design onto the ornament here or onto the coaster. It's an ornament. But what I don't really love is actually I might have the ornament kind of like falling off. I want the ornament since it's circular in nature to be um, pretty centered on that. I think this looks a little odd. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to allow that to fall off and that is completely fine with me. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it just like this. That visually looks correct to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both and then I'm going to come down to slice. And then what I did was I sliced my design out of my little coaster here and then this is going to be what my coaster looks like. So when I'm doing my coasters I like to have my ink be the prominent color so that's why I like to slice out my design from the coaster because then it allows the ink to be the primary and biggest color on the ornament. So wherever you see red is what ink will be and whatever you see white is where we'll weed out our design and that will be see-through on the coaster. So I'll go ahead and delete my little design here and again I'm going to go to the next one say send to front and then I'm going to just place this how I like it right on the coaster and that looks good to me. Okay, then I'll go ahead and select both and say slice. And then once again, I have, whoops, I have my little slice results, which I can delete. And then I'm left with my coaster design right here. Okay, I'll do the same for my wreath. Okay, bringing that right on here, size that down just a little, and that looks good. Okay, then I'll go ahead and select both, slice, and then remove my little slice results, delete. These are looking so cute. Okay, 
Now for this, this is a multi-layer file and you cannot slice more than two layers at a time. So what I need to do before doing this is I need to highlight everything and I just need to weld it all together so that it is one layer. Okay, then I can go ahead and send to the front actually. Let's see, that might already be in the front. Okay, so then I can bring it over to my design and just size it where I'd like it. That's going to be so cute. Okay, select both and slice. Again, it's allowing me to slice because now I only have two layers to work with. And then this would be really cute too as a little coaster. Okay, so we are all set. I love how those look. I have my Explore selected. I can go ahead and say make it. I personally like to have them like this just because I think I have more material left over that way that's usable. You can go ahead and put yours on your mat however you'd like. Whenever working with Infusible Ink, you want to mirror your image. So we're going to go ahead and mirror and then we'll say continue. Okay. And then for materials, we're going to browse all materials and up in that top right, there's a search engine and I just like to type in Infusible and let's see. There we go. Infusible ink transfer sheet. That is going to be the selection we use. We'll say done. And then we'll go ahead and load everything into the machine and get cutting. Now that we're over on Cricut's heat guide, I'm going to go ahead and look at my heat settings. No matter how many times I do this, I always have to look at the heat settings. So I'm going to go ahead and select the machine I'm using, which is the Easy Press 2. For my heat transfer material, I'm going to say infusible ink transfer sheet. And the base material is going to be the ceramic coaster. Now, the square coasters are completely different. They have different instructions, different heat, and different um, time for them. I believe, I can't remember which one's different, but they are different. So make sure you actually are selecting the product you have in front of you. So mine are the circle ceramic coasters. I'll go ahead and select that and say apply. Okay, so it's going to tell us we are using 400 degrees for 240 seconds with zero pressure and then wait for the coasters to completely cool. They will be very hot before you remove the transfer sheets. It also gives a stacking order, which really is helpful for me. So you'll have your easy press mat, some card stock, then we'll have the actual transfer sheet face up, then we'll have the coaster face down, ceramic side face down, um, and then we're going to have the butcher paper and then the press. So that's really helpful to see a visual. And then of course there is some ventilation warning right here and then a list of materials that you're going to need. Okay, so I have my infusible ink here. It's a brand new box, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it all opened up. And then one thing I went and did is I went and washed my hands and made sure they are very clean and very dry because you do not want to have any oils or moisture on your hands when working with infusible ink. The ink will actually come off, so if you wanna make sure that you don't have anything on your hands that will disrupt the ink. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. It comes in a black, dark tube, and then we will see the sheets inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this all out. We have butcher paper here that we are going to use, so I'll go ahead and grab a sheet of that. And then, of course, I'm going to be using this red sheet. Now it comes looking very different than the box, so don't panic. This will actually turn to this color once it has been pressed. So once the heat activates it and places it on the coaster, it will take on the color it is intended to be. So with the infusible inks that I'm not using and the infusible ink scraps that will come off of this project, I'm just going to place them right back into this. And there's also a little decusant packet or desiccant packet and a little material here in case you want to do any test. So that's helpful if you're not quite sure how the color is going to turn out, then you can test that. Or if you just want some practice, that's really helpful as well. So I'm going to go ahead and place all of that right back in there to make sure that it stays nice and dry. And then I'm going to place my infusible ink on the sheet and get it all cut out. Okay, so with the infusible ink, you're going to do the ink side up. The other side has some grid lines on it that will go face down. So the ink is going to be placed side up on the mat. And I like to use my green standard grit mat for infusible ink just because it is a really thick product. And so the standard grit mat really grips it well. 
I also like to use a brayer tool because I like to minimize how much I'm actually handling the product with my hands. So this just helps me make sure everything is rubbed down really well without actually having to use my fingers with it. Okay, so now we'll open up our machine. Again, you can use any machine for this project and we'll load it and get everything cut out. Okay, so all of my little coasters have been cut out and then I just trimmed them apart and now I'm going to weed. So what you do with weeding is it's different than when you weed adhesive vinyl and iron-on. The first thing you do is you just roll the infusible ink and you can kind of hear some cracking. Sometimes the cracking takes place as you're pulling it up off the mat. So if you don't hear a bunch of cracking, it may have just already happened, but it just kind of loosens it up. And then what you can do is you can then just use your fingers and it's recommended that you just use your hands. It's really simple to do with just your hands, but they want you to not use tools or be very careful if you do use tools because you can scratch the ink and wherever you scratch it, it will show on your coaster or your final project because it actually removes the ink from that area. So I just use my fingers. It's really simple to do. You just take your time and just pull the little sections up and off. So this is actually super easy to weed. I think the infusible ink is actually one of my favorite things to weed. It takes a little getting used to just because you're used to doing it another way, but okay. So that is our first little coaster. How cute is that going to be? I'm excited for these. I love a good coaster. I think they're just so fun and they make really nice gifts because they just turn out so polished. So let me crack this a little bit more. I forgot to do that. And then these are fairly easy designs to weed. They are kind of almost all coming off in one piece and then you're just going in to get a couple additional pieces out. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going through my final one and this is the Merry and Bright that had all of the tiny little dots around the perimeter and I'm just bending the ink and then popping out the little dots. I honestly thought this was going to be really difficult and I thought this was going to be a challenge with these small little dots, but it is actually so simple. So just kind of bend that ink, pop the dot out and you're good to go. Okay, so now I have my coasters out of the packaging, and even though they're straight out of the packaging, it's recommended that you wipe them down with a lint-free cloth to make sure they're really, really clean. And this may seem like you're being a little too much of a clean freak, but it's actually super necessary. So you don't want to have any lint or anything on the coasters prior to pressing the ink on or they get a little blue fuzz on them and it's not ideal. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I have some heat resistant tape and I'm going to take one of my little ink sheets and again, you're gonna locate the shiny side, so the shinier of the two sides, and then you're gonna just place it ink side down onto the coaster. So what I like to do is I like to eyeball it and get it right in the center and then I just kind of wrap the spare sticky sides down like I would a present. And then I go back through and I take some tape and I just tape those pieces down to make sure they are really down on there, right on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of my pieces and then we'll get ready to press them. Okay, so I have my Easy Press mat here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a piece of cardstock right on top of it. And what that does is it just protects the mat from getting any ink on it in case any comes off. And then again, we're going to do ink side down, so you're going to flip them over. I know it sounds crazy and opposite, but that is the way you do it for the circle ceramic coasters. So I'm going to go ahead and place those onto my little cardstock. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my butcher paper over that. Okay, now I'm going to take my press and it's really important that you just set your press on there, don't move it at all because you don't wanna shift the ink around because it will smear and it'll just make a little mess. So what you wanna do is you wanna just take your press at 400 degrees for 240 seconds and just set it over the four coasters. Then press the Cricut button and then just leave it. Of course, I stay here and monitor it, but I don't touch it at all. Okay, so these have been cooling for a couple hours. I had to go do some other things. So I am going to now take off the transfer sheets to reveal the coasters, which is the most exciting part. It's also the most kind of nerve wracking part just to make sure that everything transferred perfectly. But oh my goodness. Okay, so, so far I would say that it's more of a like magenta color than it is red. So just know that, but that is so pretty. I love them regardless, but it's definitely more, I think, of a magenta. That's really, really pretty though. I love it so much. Okay, and so one thing that I like about this part also is that it's kind of a surprise on which one is which if you keep them face down like this, which is always really exciting. So this one is the snow globe. Okay, this might be my favorite set of coasters I've done on my channel. These are so pretty. Look at the shine to them. And they're instantly just ready to go. Those look so pretty. Okay, so the next set or the next coaster is, oh, the Merry and Bright. This file made for a really cute coaster. And look at the dots around the perimeter. How cute is that? And you can check also, your sheets and you'll see that it all the ink is off so it has all transferred that one had a little bit um that didn't come off but you wouldn't know on the actual coaster that looks really nice and so then this is going to be the ornament i think this is our last one. Oh, i love that and i like how it's centered even though the file you know was longer with that um, string for the ornament. I like how it's centered on there. I think that looks really good. I am so happy with these. 100% these are my favorite coasters that I've done on my channel and I've done quite a few. So these are absolutely my favorite. This has been the best reveal for me. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. These are so cute. So easy. Even though the color was not the deep red that I thought. So I think it's a little bit different. This does look a little bit redder to me, but that's okay. I think they're still really, really fun. I think they're going to be a really, really fun part of our Christmas decor. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure as always to share this video and be sure to let everyone know we're still crafting for 25 days in a row over here for the 25 days of Cricut cheer and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. As always, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys all in the next video.